Hi everyone, I'm Natalie from My Progression and this is part three of our safeguarding training. This video is all about what you do if you have a concern and getting this right is absolutely key as you want to prevent any further harm coming to that child. We do recommend that you watch these in order, so if you haven't yet watched parts one and two, do that now. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to gain more education advice, support and knowledge. To put this into perspective, I'm going to refer you back to the Victoria Columbia case. If the relevant processes and procedures were followed, that innocent little girl would be alive today. You have a duty of care to act in the best interest of the children in your care. Now let's talk about what to do if you're concerned about a child. Everyone has a responsibility to act if they witness abuse, receive information about abuse, or have concerns or suspicions about possible abuse or inappropriate care. Even though you may never return to that school, you must act. So what do you do? Let's imagine a child has made a disclosure to you, explicitly told you that they're being abused. First step, listen. Give the child your full attention. Reassure, but don't make promises that you won't tell anyone. It's important that you listen to the facts and not ask leading questions. A great way to ensure this is done correctly is the TED approach. T, tell me about. E, explain what happened. D, describe to me. If you start a sentence with tell, explain or describe, it allows you to listen to the child's own account. Try not to become emotional, but reassure them that they're not in the wrong. They have done the right thing and their safety is a priority. It's important to get clarification, but not expect the child to repeat what they've said. It was hard enough for them to tell you the first time. Second step, share. This information must be shared immediately. And if this means getting your class covered, then find a way to do it. You need to speak to the designated safeguarding officer, the DSO, immediately. If you've been sent a graphic or inappropriate image of a child, then under no circumstances should you forward this on. This should only be shown to the DSO, but never circulated. Sending an indecent picture of a child is a criminal offence, no matter the intentions. Third step, record. Note down the child's actual words. Remember not to add any of your emotions to the script. It must be factual. It could end up in a courtroom. Respect confidentiality. Don't chat to anyone else about the details, even other school staff. Obviously, you must ensure that the child who's made the disclosure is reassured and carefully looked after at the same time. All of this is difficult to deal with. And after you've carried out your professional responsibilities, you may need a debriefing with the DSO for your own well-being. All that said, a disclosure is clear cut. You will know what to do. It isn't as easy when you suspect something or you notice a possible sign of abuse. But if you have slightest concern, report it. Okay, here's a difficult one. What do you do if you see a member of the school staff causing harm to a pupil? You report it to the DSO with a factual account of what you witnessed. Use the same procedure as I've already described. But what if it's the DSO? Now that's difficult, but it should be reported to the head teacher, as long as they're not the safeguarding officer. If the allegation is about the head teacher, then you should go to the chair of governors. You can always find the contact details of the chair of governors in the school's prospectus. Alternatively, talk to the local authority dedicated safeguarding officer. If you're working on supply, once you've reported the concern to the school, contact your consultant and let them know what's going on. You may not need to give them any details, but let them know that you have reported an incident and keep them in the loop. 
They are there to help you and support you and they may, may need to speak to the school on your behalf. I know that a lot of the topics and examples discussed in this series are difficult to hear, but it's important you have all the facts available to keep the children and yourself safe. I've been Natalie from My Progression, and if you found this video on safeguarding useful, please have a look around our channel to see more on working in education. And let's keep your career in motion.